Back in 2018, a series of events happened to me that still haunt me to this day. I was 19 years old at the time and a sophomore in college at a big university. I had just moved into an off-campus apartment and unfortunately as a female, I was living on the first floor. From the day I moved in, I can't explain it, but I felt a bad energy. My room was at the end of the apartment, right next to our patio slash sliding glass door. Over the month before this incident occurred, I always felt like I was being watched. I can't explain it, but any time I left to go to my car or the gym at the complex, I always moved fast and looked over my shoulder. Anyways, one night we had all gone to bed. I had work the next morning and was trying to fall asleep before it was too late. Around midnight, I woke up to the sound of my doorknob turning. Fortunately, I locked my bedroom door every night. It became a habit after I had this terrible lucid dream about a man standing in my dorm a few months prior. I sat up and looked at my door. After a few minutes of silence, I thought maybe I was just hearing things. I laid back down, but a few minutes later, heard it again. This time, I knew for sure what it was. I sat straight up in bed and looked at the base of the door. I saw shadows of feet. Someone was 100% standing there. Then I heard three faint knocks. Without even pausing to think, I yelled out, Who's there? I figured at first that it had to be one of my roommates messing with me, but no one answered and it was silent again. I called one of my two roommates, the one I figured would possibly do something like this and she answered after three rings and was super groggy. I had just woken her up. I told her to lock her door because I was pretty sure someone was in the apartment. We woke up our other roommate by banging on the walls because her phone was off for the night. We didn't feel safe going out of our bedrooms if someone was still inside. She was so confused by the noise, she came running out of her room thinking it was morning time and someone had been locked out. I heard her come out and finally then opened my door and came out. We checked the entire apartment, but no one was there. It was then that we reached the sliding glass door, which we realized was unlocked, and the curtains had been pushed aside. The realization that someone had been at my bedroom door for at least 10 to 15 minutes hit me like a ton of bricks. We called the police and filed a report, but nothing came of it. I was so creeped out, I couldn't sleep in that room again. To keep a long story short, every time I tried to go back to that apartment, weird things happened. We ended up calling the police a second time when we heard someone outside of my roommate's window at two o'clock in the morning. We had all decided to sleep in her room that night since I couldn't be in my room. And when we all woke up to the sound, we called right away. They didn't find anyone, but did see footprints around the window. The weird thing was when I wasn't at the apartment, nothing ever happened. It was only when I was there that odd things occurred as if someone had been watching me the entire time, only trying to get me. After all, they hadn't stolen anything, and they didn't try opening any of my roommate's doors, as they were both unlocked, meaning they would have got in no problem. Now the weirdest part of the story, my boyfriend at the time, he's now my husband, lived in a different city and would come and visit me on the weekends. Right after the break-in, he was driving his car when he noticed a problem with his tire. He took it to the shop, and they told him in all their years of experience they had never seen anything like this. Someone had taken four of the five lug nuts off two of his tires. The fact that the wheels hadn't popped off while he was driving and possibly killed him was crazy. It was such a vicious and intentional thing to do. I have no idea if this was done by the same person who broke into my apartment, but the timing of the events is definitely suspicious. This happened back when I was in college. It was my freshman year and I lived in the dorms on the second floor. The dorm building that I had was very popular for freshmen and was pretty large. I remember that not long into the school year, maybe a week or two in, I started to get to know some people. I was making some friends in my classes and got to know a couple people who lived on my floor as well. There was this one guy though, who I always seemed to run into or see. He was a little short, had dark brown hair, and lived down the hall from me. Almost every day when I left for class, I would see him. He would seem to be leaving either right before me or right after me. And when I would return to my dorm, I would almost always see him too. It was crazy. 
The school was not that large, but it wasn't that small either. I also saw him in several different locations around campus. I chalked it up to just a coincidence. I mean, we likely had similar class schedules, and we were both freshmen. Despite seeing him all the time, I never actually spoke with him. After probably a month of seeing this guy multiple times on just about a daily basis, I didn't think that much of it. But I got suspicious one time when I went to go fill up my water bottle down the hall. The dorm rooms had no running water or bathrooms in them, so you had to go down the hall to use either the community bathrooms or the community water fountain. I left my room and the water fountain was kind of around the corner. When I walked back and entered my dorm room, I saw the guy just standing there a few feet inside. He looked surprised to see me, but I was just as surprised to see him. He said something like, Sorry, I accidentally went in the wrong room. Then he quickly walked past me and left. I was so confused that I didn't say anything, and I just watched him leave. Then he was gone, and I locked my door. After thinking about it for a while, though, I realized how that made no sense what he said. Sure, he lived on my floor, but we had been living there for like a month now. There's no way he would just accidentally walk into the wrong room. I had only been gone for like 30 seconds to a minute at most filling up my water, so he had probably just entered my room when I got back. That very same night though, it got even weirder. I was up late doing homework. It was probably like 11 p.m. or maybe midnight. I was planning to go to bed really soon. I just remember that when I was in my room, I heard my doorknob start to turn. My door was thankfully locked, so whoever it was did not get in. But I knew who it probably was right away, that one guy that I kept seeing. I got up and ran over to the door and looked out of the peephole. When I got there though, whoever it was was now gone and I saw nothing. Now I was really creeped out that he tried to enter my room so late at night. Of course, I had no proof who it was, but I had a strong feeling. The next day, I saw the guy once more. He left his dorm room not long after I passed by his in the hallway. I was walking to my class and I assumed that he was doing the same. He was walking about 20 feet behind me maybe, and I thought about turning around and confronting him. Then I could ask him if he tried to enter my room the previous night, but I decided not to. I just walked to class and didn't see him anymore when I was about halfway there on campus. I didn't see him for the rest of the day either, until later that night. This time though, I went down to the computer lab. We had a smaller computer lab in the basement of my dorm building. Generally, it was pretty quiet, especially late at night. It was a better place to get homework done because there was a printer and less distractions than my room. So I was finishing an assignment and focused on that. All of a sudden, I looked up and saw the guy at another computer. He wasn't looking at me, but I was so mad when I saw him. There was no way he was not purposely following me around or something. He wasn't that close to me. When I saw him, I just finished as fast as possible and then left. I didn't want to be around him anymore. When I left the lab, I did not notice him leaving right after me or anything. I quickly made it back to my room and locked the door. Then I went to bed after that. The next thing that happened was a few days later. It was the weekend, I believe either a Friday night or Saturday night. I went out with some friends and was gone until pretty late. At probably some time after midnight, I was dropped off in front of my dorm building. I went inside and then was walking up to my room. Things were very quiet with how late it was. When I got up to my floor, I walked down the hallway to the end where my room was. But shortly after I passed by that one guy's door, I heard it open. I sensed him start to walk behind me. I was slightly annoyed, but that was all. As I kept walking to my room though, he continued to follow me and seemed to be getting closer. I walked a little bit faster and I could feel him getting closer still. Then I just started running. I ran the rest of the way to my room, unlocked the door as fast as possible and then got inside. When I was unlocking it, I could hear him now running, but I didn't look. Then I slammed the door shut and locked it. Not even a second after that, he arrived at my door and tried opening it. He was trying like crazy, but the door was locked, and then he started pushing on the door like he was trying to force it open. I took out my phone and called campus safety. Meanwhile, he started to basically throw himself up against the door, like he was trying to break it down or something. This went on for a minute or so, and then he stopped. I went to the people and looked, but he was still standing there. 
I thought he was going to walk away, but then he tried opening the door again and breaking the door, but the door held up. Then a campus security officer arrived and saw him at my door. He was questioned, and I heard him claiming that he must be at the wrong door again. What a lie. He went back to his room after that, and then I talked with the campus safety. The guy ended up getting kicked out of the dorm building, and I believe kicked out of the university as well. I never saw him after that. I'm sort of worried that he might show up and stalk me someday or something, but luckily, I haven't seen him since. I had one really scary experience during my time in college. It happened during my sophomore year. I attended a school that was somewhat small. You could walk across the entire campus in probably 20 minutes or less. I lived in one of the dorm buildings, and I remember that that year was my toughest class schedule. Sometimes I would be doing homework late at night in one of the buildings on campus. One night in particular, I was working on a lab assignment. It went pretty late until almost midnight. When I was finally done, I packed up all my stuff and left. The building was about completely empty, and most of the lights were off. After leaving, campus was like a ghost town. I had to walk about 10 minutes to get back to my dorm building. As I was going through a courtyard a few minutes in is when I saw this guy. He was kind of walking along the side of a building that I had sort of just passed. I'm not really sure why I even looked over in that direction. He didn't look like a normal student or employee of the college though. The strange thing about him was that it looked like he was wearing a mask. I could barely see him at all, but I did see that he was wearing what appeared to be a ski mask. I just kind of thought that it was strange, but kept walking. Probably two minutes later though, I got this odd feeling and looked behind me. I saw the guy walking and he was a really long ways back, but he was walking the same way I was. I got worried because he hadn't been walking that direction before. I hoped that he wasn't following me or something. When I got closer to my dorm building, I sort of looked behind me again. He was still there. I couldn't really hear him walking because he was so far back, but I could sense him. I tried to walk a little bit faster, and I still felt like I could make it to my dorm okay. I just had a little bit farther to go. For the next couple of minutes, I did not look behind me, and I didn't hear the guy either. Then, when my dorm building was in sight, I glanced over my shoulder. Not only could I still see the guy, but he was now much closer to me. Now he was maybe 50 feet behind me or a little more. I got really nervous when I saw that. I felt like he was definitely following me. Still, I knew that I could make it to my dorm before he did. At last, I arrived at my building. I got to the first door and then used my key fob to get into the second set of doors. I made sure that the door closed right behind me after I made it in. The man wasn't inside yet at all, and I felt like I had possibly escaped from a bad situation. After walking through the empty lobby into the first hallway, I saw a student seemingly leaving and I passed by them in the hallway. After they walked past me, I'm not sure where they were going. I continued to the end of the hallway where the stairs were. We didn't have an elevator in my dorm and my room was on the fourth floor, but I had this crazy thought when I was walking down the hallway. What if whoever was leaving the dorm accidentally lets that guy into the building. Probably like five seconds after this thought, I heard the door opening in the distance. Now I was a good ways down the hall, but not at the stairs yet. Moments later, I heard somebody enter the hallway from the lobby. I looked over and saw the same masked man. He was walking really fast and heading in my direction. I quickly went into the stairwell and ran up the stairs as fast as I possibly could. About the time I reached the fourth floor, I heard the guy entering the stairwell. Then I sprinted down the hallway and got to my room. As I was entering, the man reached the top of the stairs. He didn't come to my room or anything. I kept watching out the people. I decided to call the police and let them know what happened. They came out and searched the dorm building. They found the guy hiding in the basement. He was not a student and I'm not sure what he was doing on campus. The student that left the dorm after I entered did in fact let him in. Apparently, the guy removed his ski mask and wasn't wearing it when he was let in. Then he must have put it back on after arriving inside. The person leaving must have thought he was just a student or just didn't notice. That experience made me scared to go out at night on campus for a while. Luckily, nothing like that happened again.
When I went to college during my senior year, I lived in a house with one roommate. The house was a little ways off campus, and my roommate's name was Alyssa. A few months into the school year, Alyssa went back home one weekend. That meant that I would be living in the house by myself. The house was not that big, and I didn't think too much of it. But the very first night, something happened. I was by myself in my bedroom, and it was probably like 11 o'clock at night. I was just watching a movie or something, and all of a sudden, heard a loud banging on the front door. It wasn't even like somebody knocking. It was like they were banging on the door as hard as they possibly could. I was immediately startled by this. I got up and left my bedroom to go and see who was there. The banging went on for like 15 seconds straight, I would say. When I was walking down the hallway that led to the living room at the front of the house, it stopped. I arrived at the door and looked out of the window. When I did, I saw two men at once. One of them was running to the left and the other was running to the right. I only saw them for like a second before they went out of my view. It was so fast that I had no clue what they were doing, but I did know that they were running through my yard and heading to either side of the house or the back. I moved away to go to the back of the house. There was the kitchen and dining room. I walked back into the dining room and pulled back the curtains to the main window to look out. When I did, just about right away, I saw a guy there. He swung what appeared to be a baseball bat right at the window. Thankfully, it did not break on the first hit, but it was very loud. I instantly ran away from that window and into my bedroom. When I got in there, I got my phone and called 911. I also locked my bedroom door. As I was doing these things, I heard several more bangs from the window and eventually glass breaking. I was terrified. I just hoped they wouldn't try to enter my room, whoever they were. I heard the two men enter the house and walk into the living room area. I was on the line with 911, begging for them to get there faster. The footsteps of the men inside went around the living room for maybe a minute or two. Then it sounded like they went back towards the rear of the house. Then I stopped hearing them at all. It was like they just left. Things were silent for a while after that. I couldn't believe it. I would say maybe three or four minutes later, the police arrived. I carefully left my room and let them in the front door. They searched the house and the entire property, but the men were gone. The window was smashed and the house was slightly messed up, but nothing appeared to be stolen. It was all very strange. The police eventually left and I had to get a new window. I still wonder what those guys were doing. Sometimes I think they broke into the wrong house or something, the way they just broke in and then left so fast. A few years ago when I was in college, I did quite a bit of studying. I took school very serious and needed to spend extra time on certain subjects. Sometimes I would go to study halls and work on assignments late into the night. I could just focus better there, and I think a lot of students had similar feelings. I would often see other people working on things late. Now, I went to a pretty large university. The campus was big, and there were a lot of different buildings. One Friday night, I went to one of the study halls that I had classes in to get work done. With it being a weekend, there were not as many people around campus at night. When I was in the building, I didn't see anybody else at all. I found an empty classroom and then went inside. Then I sat down at a table, took out my laptop and notes, and began working. This went on for several hours. I would often lose track of time when I was working hard. I remember at one point, I heard a door open and shut off in the distance. When I heard it, I just figured someone else was in the building, and I didn't give it much thought. But as I kept working, I soon heard footsteps approaching my classroom. I could see the front door to the classroom with a small window in it. I looked over and soon saw somebody appear in the window. It was a guy who I didn't recognize. He looked in and then moved away out of sight. I figured he was looking for a classroom that was empty to study or work in. I went back to what I was doing after that. Probably about a minute or two later, I suddenly heard the classroom door open up. I looked up and saw that the same guy was back. I watched him enter the room, but then looked back to my laptop. I was kind of annoyed that this guy was coming in here. Most of the classrooms in this building were about the same. He could have gone to any other one, 
but he was going to the one that I was in. I was focusing on my work for the next minute or so when I realized that I never heard the guy sit down. I glanced back up and saw that he was still standing there, right inside the door. He was kind of looking ahead, not directly at me. Then he glanced over at me, but I couldn't tell what he was doing. He was creeping me out because he was just standing there. He didn't say anything at all either. I decided that I would just leave. I packed up my laptop and notes and then got up. The guy was still standing there. I asked him if he was okay, but he didn't answer me. I walked over closer to him and once more asked him if everything was all right. He finally moved and backed away from me and gave me a kind of dirty look, but still didn't say anything. Then I just left the classroom. I didn't know what to make of his weird behavior. Not long after leaving the classroom, I was walking down the hallway. That's when I heard the door opening to the classroom that I had just been in. I saw the guy leaving and starting to walk in my direction. I was really creeped out and I walked faster. He followed me all the way to the entrance of the building. Then I left and when I was out of the building, sprinted to my car in the parking lot. I saw the guy leave the building and I drove away. Luckily, I didn't see him get into a car. After that time, I didn't study in that building late at night again.